Hey there, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware here with a quick look at the Huawei Mate 8. This is an all new Huawei phone based on a large 6 inch Full HD 1080p IPS display and Huawei's new Kirin 950 system on a chip which was manufactured in their high silicon subsidiary, which is the first smartphone processor based on ARM's A72 64 bit processor architecture. Specifically, the Kirin 950 is an octal core chip with four ARM. A72 cores at 2.3 gigahertz and four ARM A53 cores at 1.8 gigahertz, dubbed the i5 coprocessor for sensor processing, etc., along with ARM's Mali T880 graphics core. The main 8 comes in two base flavors, one with 3 gig of RAM and 32 gigs of storage, and another with 4 gig of RAM and 64 gigs of storage, and a variety of colors, including Moonlight Silver, seen here, Space Gray, Champagne Gold, and Mocha Brown. Unfortunately for now, the device isn't sold here in the US on any major carriers, but it does have all LTE and UMTS carrier bands supported, so any SIM should work in the device. As you can see here, we've got AT&T's network working just just fine. Other notable standouts for the Mate 8 are Huawei's EMUI 4.0 interface that's skinned on Android 6 Marshmallow and the Mate 8's massive 4000 mAh battery. The former has its pluses and minuses. The Emotion UI or EMUI 4 interface has some very iOS looking tendencies with slick translucent overlays and menu contrast that are easy on the eyes, though occasionally dark text on dark backgrounds is harder to read. It's definitely a little clunky in spots too with no app tray. What you end up with is a lot of swiping through home screens which you can tweak transition effects for which is a nice touch but everything just feels a little too cluttered. Battery life on the other hand with the Mate 8 is positively stellar. This phone is big, though it doesn't feel particularly weighty. However, its 4,000 milliamp hour battery is one of the largest in the market for any handset currently. There are also some nice power optimization features built into the device's advanced settings area as well, and the net result is completely dominating best of class battery life. In fact, we managed to pull down nearly 11 and a half hours of connected web browsing uptime with the Mate 8's display set to 50% brightness. Hardcore road warriors, this is your phone. Walking around the hardware setup, the Mate 8 has chamfered edges and a brushed aluminum finish that feels good and looks good in the hand and resists fingerprints almost completely. With edge-to-edge -edge Corning Gorilla Glass 4 as well and an IPS display that, while just full HD, still gets the job done nicely with plenty of pop. In fact, side-by-side -side versus a super AMOLED Titan like the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, the Huawei Mate 8 holds its own. AMOLED displays have slightly better brightness, contrast, and saturation, but the Mate 8's display is actually one of the more competitive IPS displays that we've seen versus AMOLED. And though, as you can see, it is lower resolution than the GS6, that 6-inch display still offers lots of real estate, and let's be honest, 1080p is nothing to sneeze at on a smartphone. On the back side, you'll find a 16-megapixel f2.0 camera sensor with LED flash, and the same excellent fingerprint scanner that Huawei built into the Google Nexus 6P as well. This fingerprint reader works really well once set up and unlocking the phone with it is as near flawless as we've seen on any smartphone. The front of the Mate 8 sports an 8 megapixel selfie cam with f2.4 aperture up here in the usual spot near the earpiece. The rest of the Mate 8 is a case study in minimalistic industrial design, with a volume rocker and power button on the right edge of the device, and a standard micro USB sync and charge port, no USB-C, and speaker ports on the bottom, and a combination SIM card and micro SD card slot and a single tray on the left edge. It's an almost stealthy little tray that pops out of the side edge offering 2-in-1 expandability. And finally, on top you'll find a mic port and a headset audio jack. In terms of software features, the Mate 8 has the ability to offer a bit of multitasking in split-screen mode, albeit limited somewhat to just Huawei apps like the calculator, gallery, or video apps. And there's also a quick tools tray that sits off the bottom of the lock screen with easy access to things like the flashlight and calculator apps, and an omnidirectional audio recording mode with three onboard microphones. And don't knock it till you try it, KnuckleSense 2.0, which, for you knuckleheads out there, allows you special functionality like taking quick screen captures just by rapping on the display with your knuckle. Yeah, it's kind of funky, but it works.
The Mate 8's camera software is very feature-rich and powerful with settings for things like HDR mode, super night shots, panorama, and slow motion shooting. You can even lock the reticle on a subject in a shot and then pan the phone around while your target remains in focus. There's also a really nice manual mode available that allows you to adjust things like exposure, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance settings. Snapping stills with HDR mode enabled, the 16 megapixel camera in the Mate 8 offered very respectable performance with good balance and sharpness, but perhaps ever so slightly washed out in spots, lacking some saturation. Macro shots up close offered really nice sharp detail, while low light shots were less sharp but relatively grain free. Shooting outside in sunlight offered good performance, especially using the zoom with image stabilization. And shooting video proved excellent as well, with 1080p recording available at up to 60 frames per second and good autofocus and image stabilization response. But finally, what could be one of the more interesting aspects of the Mate 8 is performance, with its high silicon Kirin 950 processor. Its onboard 900 MHz Mali T880 MP4 graphics core offers just midland performance, actually, just a bit ahead of, say, the Adreno 418 graphics core and Qualcomm's Snapdragon 808 line of SOCs, but not quite up to par with a Snapdragon 810 and Adreno 430 graphics. On the other hand, the ARM A72-based quad-core complex in the Kirin 950's octal-core Big Little design offers a ton of standard compute punch, besting the likes of Samsung's Exynos octal core chips in phones like the Samsung Galaxy S6, and even occasionally the A9 in Apple's iPhone 6S Plus in certain tests. Regardless, the NetNet is a capable, well-balanced device that handles pretty much whatever you might throw at it with ease, and it does so all day long with absolute top shelf battery life. If you're okay with its six inch phablet demeanor, about the only other downside of the Mate 8 might be its price. You can find the 32 gig version at Amazon currently for $630, unlocked obviously, and $728 for the 64 gig variant. Links are in the description below, but make sure you stop by hothardware.com for our full review and toss in a thumbs up here if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel for more hot tech hardware reviews, event coverage, and of course our two and a half geeks webcast. It's Dave Altavilla with the Huawei Mate 8. Thanks again for stopping by.